Hey all, welcome to the Crawford Institute of Pop Culture Collectibles. Today we're going to wander down to the uh, Muppets area, look at some Palisades Muppets. In our must-see video, we're actually going to do two must-sees in the Palisade Muppets. Today's is going to revolve around pre-production toys. We'll do another one that has to do with production toys that uh, were pretty rare or unusual. So I'm not going to call them prototypes. I don't like that word because people throw it around to mean a lot of different things. We'll be more specific in our uh, discussion here. Let's look at the four here first. These are test shots. So this is a Fozzie, Crazy Harry, Gonzo, and Floyd. And they're cast in various colors of plastic that they happen to have around. This is towards the end of the process, shortly before production, to make sure that the figures are, uh, are you know, the manufacturing is going well and everything's looking the way it's supposed to look. Earlier than that, we have what's called, uh, what I call hard copy, usually. These are made from a very hard material. All of the pieces are cast but, and assembled, but they all come apart again, sort of like a puzzle. You can take them all apart. Here we have Waldorf and uh, Gonzo, as well as a uh, head from Johnny Fiamma and two of his jackets in the back there. A couple of the uh, accessories as well. So those are a little harder to come by than test shots. Now my next favorite thing to pick up is uh, figures that uh, didn't end up quite the way they had initially been uh, shown. So here we have uh, Dr. Teeth and the uh, Electric Mayhem band sign from the playset. Here it's in a more neon-y translucent color than what they ended up using. Penguin here is a ice penguin. Rizzo, you can see, has both red and sleeves and a red jacket along with really long thick whiskers. Uh, they went with different colored sleeves with the jackets for production. Chef this is a t uh, paint master, so he's got uh, uh, some differences in the paint. You know, the gloves you'll notice are a darker green, and there's no uh, gloss finish. The pins in the elbows and the shoulders are still white. And the beard, or not the beard, but the whiskers and the, uh, the mustache and the uh, eyebrows are a little better painted than what we ended up getting with actual production. Another example is down over here. We have Super Grover. Now, Super Grover has two additional heads. One of them, you can see, was done in a color that they didn't end up using with the hat. And the other one was sculpted without a hat. I assume because they were considering doing this version with a removable helmet, and they didn't do that. So those are two pieces that didn't quite end up getting used. Another one that's a favorite is the toilet head animal. So here we have the regular animal with the wild and crazy hair on the right. The one on the left was the first sculpt, where you can see a much more subdued hairstyle uh, with a lot less detail. So those are pieces that started out uh, slightly different than they ended up. Now we get the ones that never actually made it out at all. A great example of that is Guy Smiley here, and the letters A and B. I know they also did the letters C and D, at least in prototypes. And uh, they also have a uh, the, the uh, timer. These were part of the Sesame Street line that never did get produced. And another figure that was part of the Sesame Street line, part of Series 2, is Bert. Now, Bert here, this is a clay sculpt. This is the original first sculpt they did. This is usually gets destroyed when they make the first mold, so getting one is pretty unusual. Uh, one of my favorite items in my collection. So there you have it, a wide variety of pre-production items based on different points of production. So tune in next time for another uh, must-see sometime next week. Thanks a lot.